Good evening, ladies and gents. It is Monday, the 1st of October, uh, and this is a regular meeting of the State and City Council. Uh, we've got a quorum, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. Would you enjoy it and help me with a flag so we I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Oh, let's see. Uh, who is here tonight? Uh, Councilor Glidewell hasn't joined us yet. Councilor Moen is excused, absent. The rest of the staff is here. Uh, are there any additions to the agenda that everyone knows of? Are there any declarations of ex-party contact, conflict of interest, bias, general hatred, etc.? Okay. Presentations, comments. Uh, standard response protocol presentation by Officer Dean Butler. Officer, come on up. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Uh, my name is Officer Butler, State and Police Department. Um, two years ago, I had the opportunity of moving into a SRO position. And about four years ago, the Police Department worked with North Sinium School District, the Fire Department, and the Ambulance. Um, we realized that there was a disconnect between emergency services and the response that schools do in the event of an emergency. The slide you see um, is I, from the I Love You Guys Foundation. The I Love You Guys Foundation um, came about on September 27, 2006, when a lone gunman entered Platte Canyon High School. Platte Canyon High School is near Bailey, Colorado, uh, kind of southwest of Denver. During that multiple hour event, uh, the gunman took, went from an entire classroom down to two hostages, two female students. As SWAT breached the room, the gunman shot one student, Emily Keys. Emily's parents realized that while law enforcement and emergency services did exactly what they needed to do, there was a disconnect between them and the school. During the standoff, during the barricaded time, Emily sent two messages to her parents. I love you guys and I love you guys K. Um, I had the opportunity of going to the training put on by John Michael Keyes and the I Love You Guys Foundation and I went up to him and told him he did something I could not do. I could not take the death of my child and turn it into such a popular program. Uh, when I went to the training four years ago it was used in 19,000 schools across the United States. To date it's used at 101,000. Uh, we looked at it with North St. Anne School District Emergency Services, Police, Fire, Ambulance, and we recognized that this is what we wanted in our schools. Um, so I'm going to play a short video uh, for the I Love You Guys. It kind of explains the four actions, lockout, lockdown, shelter, and evacuate. So. Did you get them? 
plug or the, the Did you get unplugged from the wire? There it goes. It played fine when I was here. Is mute on? I apologize for Is this. Is mute on in your control panel? No. I do apologize for this. Like I said, it, it played earlier without any problem. It wouldn't even play. This is not wanting to cooperate with me. The person in the video is actually Christina Anderson. Uh, she is a survivor from Virginia Tech. The person in the video is Christina Anderson, who is a survivor from Virginia Tech. Uh, in the Virginia Tech shooting, she was shot, shot three times. And she felt so strongly that she about school safety that she joined the I love you guys. I love you guys is uh, four basic actions. Uh, lockout, which we have requested uh, schools go into lockout, it means that there's not a threat in the school but a threat surrounding the school and we just don't want to take the risk of somebody getting into the school. Um, so generally a lockout is something that law enforcement or fire um, when NORPAC had a ammonia leak a few years ago, you know, if school would have been in session, they would have requested a lock out in a shelter in place because they wouldn't have wanted any of the exterior doors to open. The next action is lock down. This is a much more serious action. This means that there's something inside the school that is threatening, whether it be a mental person, whether it be um, something worse you know somebody who's in the school with the intent of causing harm uh, we do shelter or I'm sorry evacuate uh, schools are really good at evacuating they practice it once a month in a fire drill um, shelter in place um, back when I was in high school here we actually the school actually did that they didn't call it that at the time we wound up getting snow it was safe to keep the kids in the school have parents come and pick them up than it was to send the parents out or the kids out on the buses. Um, and we, North St. Ann School District, we adopted hold. We actually asked the I Love You Guys to put that on their standard response protocol. Hold gets used 
I wouldn't say monthly, but probably six or seven times a year. Um, I know at the high school they've used it three times already. Um, they had a student that had allergic reaction. They needed to get medics in there. They didn't want the halls cluttered with students while emergency, uh, while the ambulance crew was trying to get in and out. So they actually put the school in hold. With all of the actions, um, you know the students know. You know I did uh, in on September 12th. I did a presentation for the uh, public where I had around 50 uh, people show up. I did it at the auditorium. Because this isn't anything secret. This is something we want people to know about. The schools continue to work with the students on it. Um, it's just very important for the school and emergency services to know what's going to happen. Um, you know, I know if we call for a lockout, I know that it doesn't matter what school we call, they are going to lock the exterior doors. They're going to make sure all the students are inside. And in, within the school, business is going on as usual, with the exception of class changes that require them to change buildings. So, any questions for me? I apologize for the video. Well, how many, having worked in the place for years and years, how many outside doors are there in the high school? And, well, they added some. Wow. There's quite a few. Um, they're, they're working slowly, very slowly, at getting more and more electric locks. Okay. Um, but they feel like they can, they can shut those outside doors or lock them. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they have. Um, so you have to kind of look at it. This is a standard response protocol. So this is something that schools and law emergency services use. Well, on fire safety, they have fire doors that close, right. but then they're going out other doors. This, nobody's going out. Okay. Um, but, the, so the school do, you know, you have to look at it. This is a standard response protocol. The school also has an action plan. Yeah. So there are people within the school who know if something happens, this is their job. They need to get this done. In addition to this. Okay. Any other questions? Again, I apologize for the video. I should have kept it playing on a loop. <laughs> Thank you, Dean. Okay, uh, let's see. James McGrory. James? Thank you, Mayor. Of course, I. Uh, I continue to speak on the, the smoking ban, and I understand that there's a meeting in the near future, and I encourage you to repeal that. And uh, the second part on my uh, list there, the safety concern. I've been to City Hall three times, police station twice, to bring up the safety issue which is on North 1st between Burnett and Marriott. On the right hand side, the library there, okay? Advantage Dental has four trees, okay? It's pedestrian crossing from the library going across. You can't see that pedestrian crossing sign. I almost hit somebody there about six weeks ago. I've had this own issue in my going on for six, seven weeks. I ask them get a hold of whoever is responsible to talk. I don't know if the city owns them or Advantage Dental owns them, but they need trim. So as you're coming down, you can see that pedestrian crossing sign. Somebody's going to get run over. Please do something about it. All right. Thank you, James. And uh, we'll take we'll a look at that one. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Two staff heads nodding, so something will happen. Well, I think it may have already been addressed, at least a letter written to the, the property owner, but I 
can't confirm that 100 percent so i'll just nod my head and say i'll take care of it okay super thank you steve steve push on Hi, I'm Steve Poison. I live at 1750 East Pine Street in Staten. I am the Vice President of Revitalize Downtown Staten. And I am just here to fill you in on the River Fusion event and a couple other things that we've been doing. Um, last Friday night was Staten's participation in River Fusion. We had a, what we consider a very successful event. Um, it was estimated between four and five hundred people attended. Um, it was a family friendly event, so there were a lot of kids as well as adults there. The two local restaurants, both um, Moxie Berry and Covered Bridge Cafe, stayed open late and did quite a brisk business serving food as required by the alcohol service. We had 17 shops and restaurants that stayed open until 8 p.m. So the business community participated and reported that they saw increased foot traffic. Um, and we had six sponsoring organizations which financially sponsored the event for us and 13 other events that did everything from moving the stage to letting us use plugs and all the many things that need to be done to pull off an event. So we consider it a very successful event and would plan on doing something similar next year during River Fusion. Um, the other thing that happened last week was um, our first wayfinding sign went up. Um, it's been a goal of ours to help direct people from some of the major arterials into the downtown area. Um, so we um, secured the cooperation of the property owner at 3rd and Washington and you have a photograph of the new sign that's now um, where the vacant sign used to be. Um, the, si the owner has donated the use of the sign um, for four years is the term he was willing to agree to and it cost us $1,150 total to have that sign designed, made, and installed. Um, you'll also notice the little tiny sign. Those are secondary signs that we hope to have installed on First Avenue, another important place to do some directing of traffic. And they were designed at the same time to be complementary to the one that was put up on Third. Okay. A couple of other things just to mention because I don't think we did. Last year when the um, council appropriated money for us to use in improving the downtown area, we did two things. One was to purchase 14 benches, which are currently being installed. I believe we're at about six to eight of them. I'm not sure exactly how many because I'm not involved with the actual installation. Um, they all have the label that you see there that says they're provided by both RDS and the city of Staten. So we feel like that's good publicity. and. Um, we're doing them mostly in public spaces, although we did give every property owner and every business owner the opportunity to have one and had very little response in terms of people that were interested in having them in front of their businesses. But we do have a few that we will install. Um, we're also trying to spread them out amongst our total area and um, put them in places that sort of make sense in terms of giving people something to see. Um, so they're on both first, second, and third at the waterway, for instance, um, things like that where there's something to bring people there. And then the last thing we did with the funds last year was we um, designed, had approved by the city, purchased um, sign toppers. And that's what I have an example of here. These um, have been here for a while. The city's been waiting for their new street signs to come in, and these will be on the top of the existing street signs in our focus area. Again, to start to identify this as a unique area of town. Um, and basically one of these will go at each intersection on one of the four corners. Um, so we have the, the correct number to do that on first, second, and third. Um, so that's what we're doing at this point. 
Lastly, I just wanted to introduce our new rare participant. Uh, her name is Emily Connor. She um, initially we were awarded just a rare position, and then we have the interview process, and Emily was who chose us and who we chose. And I'll just give her a couple of minutes to talk about what she's doing this year when she's here through July is her term. All right, hello, I'm Emily. Um, I came over here from Arizona, so so far I'm just enjoying what you guys have to offer. Um, I'm gonna be helping RDS with um, a lot of organization for their events, solidifying things. You know, we had a great event uh, a couple Fridays ago, but we're going to make sure that we keep that momentum going and keep it going in a, so a solid way to make sure it's really sustainable. Um, I'm just glad to be here, and you know, I'm just glad to be welcome to this community. So thanks for having me here. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. This is quite a different from Arizona, or most of it, isn't it? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Although we've had what we consider a drought, uh, 90 days without rain, and for us that's... 40 days at 90 degrees, there's only 10 degrees Major, difference. major events around here. Okay, anything else on uh, uh, comments from the public? Anything? We'll do this again at the end of the meeting, but let's move along then toward a consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, I move we approve the consent agenda. Okay. This is written. Okay. Okay. I second it. As a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Everyone's had a chance to look at it. Uh, all in favor say aye, please. Aye. 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 And Councilor Blydewell votes sort of. Said aye. No. Was, said aye. Said I'm afraid she was involved in munching and <laughs> forgot mm, to vote. No, when you work all day, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like, okay. I've forgotten. Right. This, is, this is my dinner. This is dinner, <laughs> oh dear, okay. Well, we'll, we'll, be, uh, we'll be more considerate of that. People have to eat. Okay, so there are no, uh, no public hearings tonight. Unfinished business, second consideration of ordinance number 1026, repealing state municipal code 9.20.020, begging and amending state municipal code 1012.040, bracket five, relating to prohibited parking and standing. Chief? Mayor and Council, I bring back to you for a second consideration, uh, ordinance uh, uh, number 1026, and it's to uh, uh, repeal the municipal code 9.20.020 begging and uh, which has to do with panhandling and then to uh, amend 10.12.040 uh, related to uh, prohibited parking and standing. Uh, as I stated at the last council meeting, uh, the uh, based on Supreme Court ruling, it's actually uh, a 2015 uh, case law of Reed versus the town of Gilbert, which had to do with free speech, uh, and it's being used to uh, uh, to show that uh, panhandling uh, city codes are uh, are unconstitutional, uh, and so most cities are repealing those, but then some cities are putting back into uh, uh, into place uh, city code that prohibits it from from being done from the the, the lane of traffic so that it doesn't create a safety issue with people stepping out into traffic to accept um, uh, monies and other, and other items from vehicles as they're uh, stopping at stop signs and stop lights. It, it uh, forces it to, uh, to happen in legal parking spaces or in um, parking lots. All right, you've... Uh Everyone's seen that uh, memorandum, yeah. mm -hmm. and this is a second consideration of this. And what would you folks like to do? We've got two recommendations: one to approve the ordinance 1026 as presented, and the second option is to approve ordinance 1026 as amended. So, what would you folks like to do? I move that we accept the first option as presented. Okay. Second. A motion and a second to approve ordinance 1026 as it's presented which is um, okay it rec it repeals state municipal code 9.20.020 
and amend State Municipal Code 10.12.040. Is there any other discussion? Alyssa, would you poll the council on this one, please? Sure. Well, hold on, Count Mr. Mayor. Right. Oh, go ahead. Rich, what about ice cream vendors? It would require them to pull over to the side of the street uh, to, uh, to do, sell their wares, which actually really is a safer option because uh, it's better than having the kids run out in the middle of the street uh, and getting ice cream cones from the, from the vendor as he's parked in the middle of the roadway. They would just have to pull over to the side of the street, park, and let the kids buy it from him then. Good question. Good response, Rich. Thank you. I thought, thought of that one already. Anyone else? Anything else? Okay, Alyssa? Yes. Councillor Usselman? Yes. Councillor Glidewell? Yes. Councillor Quigley? Yes. Councillor Cronquist? Yes. Motion passes four to zero. Okay, thank you. And we move along to new business, safe routes to school grant. Uh, Mr. Ludwig and Mr. Fleischman. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Staff has put before you resolution 983, which would authorize staff to submit an application to the State Department of Transportation for a Safe Routes to School construction grant. Back in 2011, the city and the school district went through a Safe Routes to School uh, action plan, identified a number of uh, improvements necessary to encourage more school children to bicycle and walk to school instead of being driven by their parents. Uh, shortly after that, uh, the city applied for a school construction, gr a safe routes to school construction grant and was not successful. I believe that was in 2012. Uh, and shortly after that, the uh, state suspended the program. With the passage of the 2017 <coughs> transportation package by the legislature last year, the state has uh, reinstated the Safe Routes to School construction grant program. And we are uh, envisioning a project that would complete the sidewalk on the north side of Shaft Road from uh, it's, it's now in place in front of the middle school and Wildlife Meadows, uh, continuing to extend that to the east to Cascade Highway, and uh, as well as the possibility of some um, uh, pedestrian activated flashers for key crossings on, on Shaft Road. So we're looking for your authorization to submit that grant application, which is due uh, October 15th. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Uh, We've got in here that Hayden Homes is going to extend that sidewalk to the west. Is that part of there? Is that written and signed? And that that is part of uh, that will be part of the frontage improvements they are required to make in, in when they build their subdivision. Okay, good enough. Other questions or thoughts? Yeah, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Dan. It says that the uh, grant program requires a minimum of forty percent cash match. Is that cash match from Hayden Homes and developers, or is that from the city? That would be, f that from it would be from rate. any source other than the safe routes to school. So, so by including, if if we call the project all the way from Kindle to Cascade and use the money that ro uh, you, part of the cost of Roger Roberts, but I have a feeling that it's all going to need to be stuff that is, we can't use money that was spent two years ago as part of the cash. Do you have any idea what the cost to the city would be? Well, at this point we do not because we have not developed the cost estimates for the for the project. Is that the only location we can use it? It is not. The, it needs to be within one mile of a school. Okay. Uh, it, it was the highest priority in the Safe Routes to School Action Plan that was done seven, what, yeah. seven years ago. His, you know, again, my, my concern about that crosswalk at uh, in front of the animal supply, that's, that's just a recipe waiting for something to happen. So I'd like to see that somehow flashed or something. Yeah. So. I mean, we have identified, yeah, there, uh, first and Locust, mm -hmm. around the elementary school, uh, perhaps something on Gardner as well for high school students or middle school students crossing Gardner. 
uh, can all, could all be included. We are, we are meeting Wednesday morning to sort of talk about what will be the scope of the project and, and begin to develop cost estimates for the grant application. Okay. Um, other thoughts and comments on this, folks? Somebody want to suggest some action here? Mr. Mayor. Yeah. I'll offer a motion to uh, approve resolution number 983 to support submitting an application for a safe route to schools construction grant. Second. Okay. I have a motion to approve the resolution as presented, which is to approve resolution 983 to support submitting an application for a safe route to schools construction grant. Is there any discussion? Second. Well, I was already got a second on it, I thought, but it was good. That's good. Any other discussion? On the motion. Alyssa, one more time. Sure. Councillor Cronquist? Yes. Councillor Glidewell? Yes. Councillor Quigley? Yep. Councillor Esselman? Yes. Motion passes four to zero. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, Village Creek, no parking. Lance, Chief, Mr. Fleischman. I drew the short straw on this one also, okay. so uh, <laughs> all right, you're, you're you. stuck with me. That's all right. So uh, at your last meeting, there was some a presentation uh, from the public about the uh, no parking restrictions in the Village Creek neighborhood. At that time, the council requested staff to come back with a staff report and some options for you to consider. Um, the the Village Creek subdivision, which is the, the homes around uh, Weldon, Hobson, Whitney Streets, and Greer Drive, uh, was originally supposed to be a mobile home park when the Santi Am Station uh, development was uh, presented to the city and approved by the city council. The streets were des designed and constructed with 50 foot wide right of way and a 28 foot pavement width with what we're calling rolled gutters or s sloped curbs, not a standard vertical curb, so that I assume so that the trailer delivering a mobile home or the mobile home itself could be backed onto the site any location without the necess necessity of designating a, a driveway. After the streets were constructed, the developer, my understanding is the developer decided rather than develop a mobile home park, they wanted to do a standard single family home subdivision and came back to the city. And the city council in 2001 approved the conversion from a mobile home park to a subdivision. Uh, there was a long list of conditions of approval, one of which stated <coughs> that there would be parking allowed on only one side of the street on those streets since they were not of standard width. As I said, the streets are in 50 <coughs> foot wide rights away with 28 feet of pavement. The city's standard resi local residential street is an, in a 60 foot wide right of way with 32 feet of pavement. With a, uh, so, um, why this, there were never no parking signs erected by <coughs> either the developer or the city, uh, I don't know. But um, in 2014, as the result of complaints that the city received because of congested parking on Hobson Street, uh, staff at that time uh, dug into the record, discovered that there was the condition of approval on the subdivision, that parking be allowed on one side only, uh, and street signs were put up. Um, until a couple weeks ago, I was under the impression that all four streets had had no parking signs erected on one side of the street, but learned that only uh, Hobson and Greer have the no parking signs erected. 
So with only 28 feet of pavement, there is not adequate room for two lanes of traffic and, two, and parking on each side. With a seven foot parking lane, that would leave only 14 feet of travel way if there were cars parked on both sides. So uh, with that, uh, staff recommends to the city council that the city maintain the restriction to allow parking on only one side. And the options that we present to, your, to you for your consideration tonight are to either retain the condition of approval for parking on only one side of the street and to keep the signs as currently posted or to retain the condition of approval for parking on only one side of the street and for the city to post no parking signs on Weldon and Whitney Street in conformance with your with previous city council's conditions of approval and if you would choose to remove the restriction for parking on only one side because it was a condition of approval on a land use matter it would require establishing setting a date for a public hearing going through the appropriate findings uh, and and removing the condition of approval from that land use. So that would be the third option to set a date for a public hearing to essentially reconsi reconsider condition of approval U from the land use file back in 2001. Dan, uh -huh. is there any reason why we wouldn't sign the other two streets that are non-parking, no parking? I mean, it's only, I mean, yeah, there's a few hundred dollars in signs and some labor involved, but I mean, if it's officially no parking, why wouldn't we put up signs? We, I, 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 why I is that no, not option I number no one? I have no reason to offer, Counselor. <coughs> Go ahead, please. Good question. So it looks like at least 18 people that live there would ask us not to have signs there. Do we know how many people live there? I, I don't. I would guess there's probably, Lance is suggesting 100 lots. I was thinking there were 75 or so lots in the subdivision, okay. but I'd have to. I, I would just say that that, that that seems like a lot of people that actually live in that neighborhood that are saying that they don't want something I would like to be able to hear I guess what what they say they're the people that have to live there all the time that live there and park there and have been doing so uh, from the time that they bought their home um, and so maybe we need to reconsider whatever action was taken and never enforced long ago at the request of the people who live in that neighborhood Mr. Mayor. Yes, go ahead. Uh, actually, I'm glad Priscilla mentioned that. There's actually 41 people on this uh, signature list here. Anybody on this list in this audience tonight? Anybody? 41 folks and they don't show up. Uh, let me tell you this. I went down there tonight and this is a heck of a mess. I can't believe the curb. There is no curb there essentially. So what I saw tonight was on the side of the street that is signed, there was folks parked there, and there was one gentleman in particular uh, washing his car, and essentially was washing his car on the sidewalk. So before we do anything, I would consider, I would ask you guys to go down there and take a look at it if you haven't already. Uh, the previous council that did this left us with a mess. Um, I would tell you that changing this is gonna essentially allow people to park on the sidewalk, because that's what's happening today. So I don't I don't know the easy solution to this I really don't but it's it's a it's a mess. Okay. Chief, do we have a lot of calls down in that area? I know police and fire you can't tell about fire and just off the cuff guess. And the the we, concern is emergency access. We we do respond down there uh, as far as getting the patrol cars down there. It yeah it would be difficult if they to some degree if they're parked on both sides just as it would be uh, on any narrow street. Uh, in a residential area, it can be tricky. The bigger issue is whether a fire truck can get through there safely, and that's what the issue was in 2014. Uh, 
when I spoke to the fire department, they, they had concerns with that as well. Uh, where this all stemmed from is the neighbors were, it used to be they were, they were parking prior to, to, to August of 2014, they were parking on both sides of the street down there. And the neighbors got in a major neighborhood dispute where they were constantly calling each other f on each other. And we were going down there on a regular basis to deal with neighborhood disputes about where people were parking people parking up on the sidewalks, people blocking the roadways, people having uh, numerous cars per residence and, and taking up <coughs> numerous places. And so we looked in the code and that's when uh, Mr. Fleshman found uh, where there, there was the requirement. And then um, in, on August 15th, I sent a letter to all of those neighbors uh, telling them what their decision was. And I talked to them at the time. I says, this is what one of the solutions is. I says, uh, was that we would go back to making it parking on only one side of the street. And at the time, the people that I talked to were in agreement with that, um, including the gentleman that was here last, or the last council meeting. And so then I sent a letter to all of those neighbors telling them that this was what the result would be, uh, and this is what we were gonna be doing. And it was until just until recently that we started getting complaints again uh, from those neighbors uh, about the issue of that there's, they don't have enough room to park uh, without uh, parking on the sidewalk and without using only one side of the street. So it's been going back and forth. Go ahead. One more question. Brian. So Chief, um, when you say those folks, are they plural or is it still the gentleman that was the petitioner that came last time to us? Because it's, I think if you listen to his words, we can play it back, but I believe he said he was having a dispute with his neighbor. It's, it's mainly that, that person and then the, the neighbor they're having the dispute with is where the majority of the calls And that's why I want to I make sure these folks that signed this understand what the nature of the issue is. So I, I, I kind of tend to agree with you. I want to hear some more folks here. I don't know how we get yeah. to that point, though, to, to get that, to that spot. Public hearing. Do number three. Yeah, number three. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, this goes a long way. This is their neighbor. And if this was a if this was a major, a major street, I would tell you absolutely not. But they're the folks who have to live down there, and yep. so I'm I'm okay with Priscilla's suggestion about number three. Number three. Yeah. Okay. So shall we? Let's just. Someone else has anything else to add to this? Um, Probably notifying each household and saying, well, if, if we could take the signs down, but you get to accept the consequences of, of uh, things getting congested in there and us not be able to move public safety vehicles in there. Okay, that's fine. It never happened. We don't have, we don't have fires or anything down here, so no problem. That's not really an option, is it? No, and actually, Officer Butler just mentioned to me that in 2013 there was an arborvitae fire down there, and there was a concern with getting fire vehicles down there at that time. Yeah. That's five years ago, Mr. Mayor. Couldn't happen again. Go ahead, Brian. Uh, I did, you know, I did some research on this because I asked Chief, well, if we, if, we, if the council takes action on this and reverses it or takes the sign down, are we giving the folks down there? Um, approval to park on the sidewalk and you know <laughs> I'm telling you that's what's going to happen because we have a code that actually prohibits parking on the sidewalk but the way that that, that street is designed the, the folks are going to park on the sidewalk it's happening today I don't know how else we get around it well you can't tell where the sidewalk and the street that's is correct. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's that roll yep. roll curve yeah okay so shall we go ahead and direct staff to let's schedule a public hearing I would move we do that okay I don't think we need a motion on it, but uh, let's go ahead and do that. We need a motion, don't we? Yeah, I'd quit. yeah. we can do a motion and just okay. to make, yeah, make, a, make a motion. And a motion. And Is there a second? The motion should include the date you want the public hearing to occur. Go. Okay. Dan, how much time do we have to give for a public hearing? Uh, 20 days, so I guess that would be your first meeting in November. Okay. Whatever date that is. So moved. Okay. A motion yeah. and is there a second there? Yeah, well, day. then. Second meeting in November. I revise my motion to be the second meeting in November. Okay. Motion to schedule a public hearing on the land use of file 21-09-01. Second meeting in November. Is there a second? There isn't one yet. I'll second it. All right, motion and a second to go ahead and have a public hearing on that um, 
condition of approval in, what's the name of that area again? Village Creek. Village Creek, okay. Well done. Any other discussion? <coughs> so just for my own mm -hmm. verification, that public hearing will be posted where, when, how? It will be posted on the city's website. It will be posted here at the community center, at City Hall, and in the library. And every property owner within the subdivision and within 200 feet of the subdivision will receive written notice in accordance with the city code. Okay. Yeah. Is there, is there anything that says that if I chose to that I could go there and make sure people know about it? Is there, is that not okay? I, I think it would be careful. If I didn't have a, a if I don't have a, I don't have a, uh, an agenda one way or the other, it doesn't matter to me at all. I just want I, I think to make should. sure that people know. I think we could direct, if you want us to do something beyond what we've talked about, I mean, you can, you could say you'd like staff it as a decision maker. I think it would be something that you should avoid well, having communication or, or perceiving like you're in any way, even if you're acting uh, without without prejudice, that it would, it, it would in any way compromise. So I think what we should do is have staff, if you would like us to do something more with what we've said, take those actions. Actually, I would like to do something as a city councilor to talk to people that doesn't feel like I'm doing something wrong. And, and, I, and it doesn't seem to me like in visiting a neighborhood and saying, hey, do you guys know that there's a public hearing company coming, that that is something wrong. And it seems like every time that I mention trying to go and talk to somebody or something, I'm kind of told, no, you can't do that. You're a city councilor and you can't do that. And I don't, and, and I feel uncomfortable right. with what? that as a representative of the people who voted me in, that I should be able to talk to people. Mm -hmm. huh. what, if, Keith, what if we all went a designated <laughs> evening? <laughs> no, really. Mr. Mayor. As Go ahead. I just, I, I need to, we, I, one point of clarification, this is a potentially a land use decision and in that role, the council acts in a quasi-judicial setting and it's just, yeah. I think he's just being prudent and trying to warn us about don't get us to a point where we're going to have to recuse ourselves or show bias in, in, the, in that potential coming up, up, upcoming hearing. And not be able to make a decision. That's all, yeah. that's all I'm thinking of saying. Okay. All right. So you're considering letting people know that the hearing's coming up as showing bias? Uh, I mean, it's no, a quasi-judicial no. role. Oh, okay. He's right. But just because of that, if it was a meeting, say, we're, we're going to paint the park this different color, there's no problem. Go with that and tell them. But it's, a, it's, a, it's potentially affecting someone's property. I think that's where we have to be careful. I, I agree. We have to be careful. If I owned property in that area, I can think of all kinds of reasons why I wouldn't do that. This doesn't happen to be one where I feel like I'm, there's any any problem with me doing that if I chose to. Uh, yeah, I understand. Okay. I'm just here. I'm just. My recollection of what I was advised from previous uh, council was to really pay attention to the land use, uh, the land use discussions. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Okay. A motion and a second, Mr. Mayor. Should we vote? Oh, yeah. We're moving right along here. I needed the help. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Any other discussion? If not, Alyssa, third time tonight, please. Pull the council. Sure. Councilor Usselman? Yes. Councilor Quigley? Yes. Councilor Cronquist? Yes. Councilor Glidewell? Yes. Motion passes 4 to 0. Okay. Second meeting in November, then, on a public hearing on that condition of approval for that neighborhood. Second November. Okay, what's next? Uh, staff commission reports, there aren't any tonight. Presentations, comments from the public, one more chance here. Anyone? Anyone want to offer something? Something? Uh, business from the city manager. Keith? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have nothing this evening. Okay. Uh, business from the mayor, not tonight. Thank you. Um, business from the council. I, Go ahead. I would just like to say that I am um, un, 
on the opposite side of many people's belief, I have not been um, involved at all uh, or in any kind of active way with uh, the re revitalized downstate and downtown Staten for a year now. And um, as such, somebody who has not been involved with them for a year, um, I would like to say that I am totally blown away by the accomplishments that they have done to um, get people to go downtown. The, the historic uh, district signs on top of the signs, the new benches, the, the signs that are happening, uh, considering that they're all volunteers and they are working so hard at this, I just want to give them a giant kudos. And I also wanted to say that um, I totally welcome the AmeriCorps volunteer that's going to be helping them um, over the next few months. And thank you for coming to our city to volunteer your time to do that. Okay. Janice, anything going on here in this room this weekend? So actually, it starts Thursday night. Starts the the fall used book sale for the State and Public Library, the Friends Group. So the sale starts Thursday night and then is on Friday and Saturday in the community center. So we invite you to come look. It's good to know. I thought I'd missed it again this year, but it's just yeah, good, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, I think uh, Officer Butler is being a little modest in his presentation, and the reason why I say that is because. His suggestion to that organization has gone nationwide. So I think um, Dean owns a, has a little bit more, uh, needs to get a pat on the back there for not being, uh, <laughs> coming out and really actually, his suggestion changed that for a lot of people. So Dean, thanks very much for your leadership and your recognition of that issue. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. The other thing, one more thing, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Um, I actually uh, agree with Priscilla's uh, comments about RDS, and I welcome Emily as well. Um, to that note, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of liaisons on this on this dais or, or from this council to other organizations in the community. I think uh, one for the school board, one for um, uh, whatnot. Yeah, yeah, the parks. Uh, my, my recommendation would be that we have someone from the council be the liaison to RDS so we can try to really see what the communication is going forward and actually have a little bit more of a solid partnership uh, together to try to move some things forward. So that's my recommendation. Okay. All right. It was a great event, Steve. Good job. What's up, Your reputation. Would any of this group like to... Uh, I think that I that. think that's a great recommendation. I um, and I would like to see maybe that move forward in the future. I'd like to see what our uh, what our uh, election holds and what what uh, what the what the group looks like uh, at the first of the year and and maybe take that on as as a, another thing if the city agrees to that. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you, Priscilla. That that is a fine fine suggestion. All right. Uh, future agenda items for October fifteenth. Shaft Road Waterline Economic Development RFP and a CARTS bus stop agreement. And if there's nothing else, we're adjourned. Thank you.